Okay, so this is the second part of the TV Paint After Effects demonstration. So this is the folder structure that TV Paint has created uh, when you export using JSON. Uh, because of the peculiarities of using the CTG layers to extend it out to the end, uh, we have this little thing as well here, uh, but it's less important uh, for what we're doing now. That's just an empty layer, basically. Within Plant L, we have Plant Line Work. Plant C, we have Plant Color Work. So you can see this is 01, 03, 05, 07, 09, and 011. So it has the timing already baked into the numbering of the files. Uh, same with the line work for the pot, just one image, so it's now 156 images. Again, makes your file sizes much easier to manage. Plant shade, plant highlight, then we have the soil, then we have the text. So now go back into After Effects. You may ask, okay, so how do I actually open the JSON file? So you can go to File, suggest installing the script file. Okay, so this is the folder that I've just popped the JSON file is. This comes with uh, TV Paint, but it may be hard if you're not the person installed TV Paint to kind of source it. So I can leave a link for that in the video description. But we have Atrefix import TV Paint json.jsx. So it's a JavaScript uh, setup. You can go select. I've already installed it, so it's going to try and reinstall it. So you can just go to override if you want. You'll see once it's once it's installed, you'll see this little dialog box here. Successfully copied to your preferences folder. Uh, you can re re restart After Effects, but because I already had it set up there, I don't need to do that. So within your window, you see now you have an additional function here. Go to After Effects, Import TV Paint JSON. This little window will pop up. So now we have a few little options here. We have a Browse button, Import Camera. We click on that. We have Key Values versus Raw Values. So uh, Key Values will bring in those keyframes that you've created of the camera work. But it won't one to one recreate what TV Paint is doing with the camera because of how TV Paint is a slightly different way of working uh, with the calculations of the position and scaling. Uh, so if you wanted one to one, you can have it as raw values and your golden. Uh, but I like to bring it as key values unless there's really specific reasons or timings that I need to match because uh, it means I have less footing around with the different uh, keyframes if there's 100 keyframes rather than three keyframes it's much easier to pick out which ones are important um, with the lower number so we have layer colors time remap blending modes so if there's any blending modes on those layers uh, that'll bring in two or pre or post behaviors so you can have rebuilt native sequence index or name so those are just slightly different ways to work with the time remapping. So I'm going to have import camera switched on because I know that the camera move in this and import is key values. I'm going to browse. So what we have here now is we have Vicus Lirata plant JSON file. And I clicked OK. And you can see it's going to start building it here. Unless, oh, it did that little tricky thing it sometimes does. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly re-export from TV Paint because it sometimes will just export out a blank file. Um, and this is kind of counterintuitive because you can see in the folders that I've just shown you, we have all of our actual PNG elements, but the JSON file itself can just glitch out sometimes. So and hit play. Cool, that's all there. And go export to, or clip layer structure rather. Vicus Larata V01 and for the crack I will just change that to V02 and click export. Okay, and now I'll try this again with the V02. Yeah, it can just be the look of the draw where it just refuses to import in things properly. Okay, so this one is rebuilding it up. And I'll just double check my dimensions now. This is 1920 1080. Then we exported at 3840 by 2160. 
uh, well, this is what's actually working with the camera. So you can see we have a big comp here. I'm just going to rename that. Uh, I guess Arata. Uh, stack. And we have our camera. This layer has been set to a 3D layer, so the camera can operate upon it. See the camera itself. This guy out of the way. And we can find this again in Windows, but if when you don't need it, we don't need it. We're looking at real estate here. Um, so you can see here, camera goes down, the camera goes up. So here I can actually do a bit more control. I can have a, a more of an ease out there. I do all the kind of usual stuff you do with um, After Effects. There we have it. So we have a, and I recreate the camera there a little bit, but it is handy to have this information from TV Paint as a guide. Um, and if I was to use the different way of importing, where you import as raw, you basically just have one to one with TV Paint, which makes it flatter. Um, it's only because there is a lot of stuff happening in the calculations within After Effects that is different from how TV Paint works, that we get that skewing of the plane. Um, so there it is there. See, those are all little elements. You did want to import the TV Paint camera work, accurate to what's in TV Paint. You just go to import camera, raw values, go to your JSON file, and it's going to rebuild the scene now with the raw values in place for camera position. Do a bit of crunching. It will sometimes turn up this little error over here. Object, object, which just means that it's kind of looking for something that's not there, but not to worry about really. So um, you can see this is much flatter, kind of similar enough to the other thing. Um, but here, instead of only a few keyframes, we have all 140 odd uh, frames are in scene. So you know, it just makes your life a little bit harder if you were to try and pick them out and tweak them. But in any case, um, we can just use this for the moment. Um, this is our TV paint. So I'm just going to call this Marcus Narata TPP cam. We double click into the actual pre comp layer. I'm going to rename this as well. Um, Again, this is the exact same as the comp that was used in the other thing. It's just reconstructed it again uh, because of how it works with the JSON import. So we have here time remapping going on. Um, we have plant line, plant color. Those are the only ones really that are working with uh, multiple frames. Everything else is just one frame, so they're all set to hold. And you can see here that, oh, well, the keyframes are ending here. so. Shouldn't they stop there? It's like, no, because we have an expression. It means that it will last key duration two. And then key position back to one. Uh, travel time, key, no keys time. And basically all this garbage here just means that it's loose back to the first one and keeps repeating the keyframe pattern. Um, which is a benefit because then you don't have to retime layers and if layers are mismatched uh, and you try and retime them, it just gets really messy because you have line work and color work separate. So uh, there is our stuff. There's a little untitled layer. We don't really need that. That's the layer it's looking for actually, but I deleted. I'm cre gonna create a shape layer. Open on the back, call it BG. So create your shape layer, change the fill to fill the area, okay, you can do a little bit of jiggery poker if you wanted with any of the titles, so if I had this set to multiply it'll just blend a bit better with the background. So we have the soil in the posh, we have the highlight on the right side of the posh, we have the shadow on the left side of the posh, and we have the line work. 
Then we have our color for our plant animation and our line work for our plant animation. You see it's maintained the colorized labels as well, which makes our life a little bit easier to keep track of what's what. I make this one a, uh, this is our background. And the benefit of having things separated is that we can do stuff to them very quickly. Now it says After Effects has a new function whereby you don't need to constantly have duplicates of layers in order to do complicated matching. Create a shape layer here. Call this plant. Color shift. And we have a track match. Now to plant color. Pop it underneath the line. Um, you see it has this tracked to those colors then. I don't necessarily want to just do that. I want it to have a little bit of a gradient. I'm going to use the mask tool. Pop this there. Use the feather tool. Pop it down. And pop this up as well. Cool. And then I'm going to switch back on my plant C. So better subtract. Okay, so then we have a little bit of action going on there. I have an add. And then I'll lower the opacity. Okay, just so you can kind of feel it. Uh, plant line work. This is the sh actually, I should have showed you this earlier on as so, well. You can see here we have another pre comp here. And this is just the animation layers. Um, and they don't even have the timing on them. There's no animation on them at all. And it's just a way of collecting all your images. Within here, then, you actually have a stack of images. There are just one, two, three, four, five, back to back. Um, what you can do is if you apply anything to this, it'll update along into all the pre-comps it appears in. So it can make your life a little bit easier. Then you can just massage things. So now maybe if you wanted to add a little bit more color stuff, can duplicate this. Go into layer styles again, and this is like a quick and dirty way to do it. Evelyn and Boss. Let's solo this layer as well, just so you can see it on its own. Up the size. Change it to Fizzle little soft. A little bit of texture there then. Now, where the shadows are coming from, where the shadows are being cast to the left, light from the right. So we can actually adjust a little bit of the um, angle of this, maybe 75. Cool. And then we can drop the values here. If I also affect color correction and I just hue saturation, they're white. I'm just going to pre compose this and move all attributes into the new composition. Plant shading. And once you move all the layer styles in, it, it means that you can now actually adjust the contrast points. Um, the main thing about layer styles is they, they are separate to the effects, so you can't change the softness or contrast outside of the layer styles. You have to work within the layer styles unless you pre-compose. So let's use a stylize posterize function. And pop this down to the like lowest number it'll go to, two. Um, there. Uh, but I will also do a little bit of a curve correction. Here we have the curves. Pop that in front. Switch this off for the moment. Switch on a posterize. It doesn't make much of a difference at this point. 
correct it with the curve instead. And I'll add a little bit of a blur. Closing blur will do the job. 35. So now we have a little shader for our plants. It's not really doing a lot there, so I'm going to just trim it back to the plant C. Trim to the edges. Copy in another curve adjuster. It just works a bit nicer with the values that we had set up. This is like a very quick and <laughs> dirty way to do it as well, so don't worry again. So now we have a little bit of shadow work happening. And again, if I had to set to multiply instead of overlay, you have a flattening of the white spots, so I had to use overlay. You can also use soft light if you wanted. That's something a little bit muted than overlay. Um, so we've got soft light on, which the um, opacity at 100%. Get yeah, a nice little effect like that. Here we have the TP paint scene, camera work. Then we have the artifact scene with camera work. Again, if I was paying a bit more attention, I could add more proper shading to it, but that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of the stuff you can kind of do at least with the process I described. So again, bringing in things on TV Paint, making your comp life easier. Thank you for watching and hopefully it's of use. Um, let me know if you have any questions and I'll try and get back to you. Okay, bye bye.